Hello gamers, the wait is finally over and I've done another tips and tricks video. However, this time we have another 50 along with the three past videos, so another 250 to make it 300. If this video gets 15,000 likes, I'll make another tips and tricks video, but hopefully that won't happen for like a year because these tips and tricks videos do take a very long time to make. So yeah, make sure to like and subscribe, watch until the end, and enjoy the tips. If there is a tip that doesn't really count as much in the older videos, I'll put a correction on screen on what you should do instead. For example, a suppressor will no longer affect the shotgun, which is something that was in my original tips and tricks video, and I'll have something on screen to tell you. But let's just get into the tips, man. Despite being a 22, rat shot on the scorpion actually improves your damage and allows you to two shot to the head. The AWS actually fires in bolts significantly faster than the AWM. 45 super on the Tommy gun is basically 10 millimeter, but actually good. The Famas G2 is surprisingly strong with hollow points due to it having a three shot kill again at 1,100 RPM. This gun's time to kill is practically unrivaled for assault rifles now that the M231 no longer can three hit. The jury and the KAC SRR have about the same recoil, but the jury has a much slower recovery speed, meaning the SRR can actually fire accurately a lot faster. The AK-12C 9x39 conversion is basically a 25-45 conversion on an AK that gives you better damage in a torso multi. It's really broken. The Vector with 22 LR can actually two shot to the head, while the default Vector can't. But funnily enough, the difference is only 0.5 damage. The grenade you start with can actually deal damage from up to 30 studs away, but can only kill from about 17. The Honey Badger is one of the few press guns that actually has a pretty fast velocity at 2200 and funnily enough 300 blackout which is the ammo type the honey badger is chambered in actually has a pretty slow velocity and will nearly always lower your velocity on a gun that's a 556 with that conversion the hk51b actually reloads a little bit faster than the hk21 the colt smg 50 gi lowers your fire rate by 150 which means that even though it can be a two shot since past 20 studs away it's going to be a probably a three tap it actually has a slower time to kill, which is kind of a scam considering you only get 14 rounds. 2545 is pretty much a direct upgrade and it's so powerful that they actually had to remove it on the C7 and the Colt LMG and replace it with 20 tanks. 762 on the C7A2 does 33.34 damage, which actually allows it to do 100.2 damage with three shots, allowing it to be a three hit since damage doesn't round up or down. And it also does 50.01 to the head, so it can two shot headshot as well. Despite 20 tanked and 20 545 giving you 20 rounds and making your reload faster. 7.62 on the M16s doesn't make your reload faster, even though it's also 20 rounds. And that's probably because 7.62 is a little bit heavier, I guess. The muzzle booster actually kind of messes up the N94 burst with 7.62, which is pretty bad, and I don't really recommend using both in tandem, especially if you plan on hitting anything. Despite being very tiny and having a very fast bolting speed, the Steyr Scout doesn't even have the best aiming speed in the game for sniper rifles. It's fine, but it's not really that great. This isn't shown here because I don't have a console, but on Xbox, you actually get lower recoil as well as extended hitboxes. And if you connect a controller to your PC, only if it's an Xbox controller, it will actually lower your recoil, which is pretty cool, although possibly kind of broken. Most 45 ACP guns have bad velocity and only 0.5 studs of pen. However, the UMP actually has 1.4 studs, which is actually better than some 7.62 guns. It still has pretty trash velocity, but if you use 45 Super, you can have fast velocity and good pen. Long barrels on shotguns are pretty much cosmetic after they made them not affect spread anymore. The M16A4 is arguably the best M16 variant because it bursts fast, it reloads fast, it has pretty low recoil, it can two shot head and three shot body. And speaking of the M16A4, a little fun fact is that the M4 actually shoots faster and has a better max range. It also reloads a little bit faster, but the M16A4 is probably a little bit better overall. Most carbines are underused, like the Grozas, KAC, SRR, Jury, AK-12C, M C 51 SD, L22, and a bunch of other ones. The M1903 and the Remington 700 are the two best jack-of-all-trade snipers because they do everything really well. I would say the M1903 is slightly better, but they're both very good. The highest recoil M3A1 setup has a very weird feature where the hip fire is very accurate for no reason, but the second you aim, the recoil gets really high. This would be a really funny setup to troll people because they would probably aim in and get the high recoil if they picked up your gun. Overpowered guns might not necessarily be the best for 
for everybody, but the C7A2 is always going to be very easy to use. Most guns in this game have at least one defining good factor. Even guns like the suppressed Makarov have something cool, such as a very high headshot multi, which allows every gun in this game to be somewhat good in their own way. They have buff Norma ammo on the TRG and the AWM, but they aren't really that great still. Basically what they do is they give you better velocity, better pen, and better ranged performance by a little bit, but they will lower your torso kill range, so they're really not that great. Even though nobody's really using the ASVAL anymore, it's still a really, really good gun. 380 ACP on the Rama can now 3 hit kill to the limbs and 2 shot kill to the head, and since it reloads super fast, it might not be too bad for bursting. If you can control recoil on a 45 or 9mm gun, use plus P, it's basically a direct upgrade, and if you don't care about your damage at range, 45 super is even better. Shotguns no longer get worse spread from the skeleton grip, so you could actually use it on a shotgun now, however, they do get slightly worse recoil. The gyro jets are still arguably better than the M107. L86 LSW actually got increased velocity when it was nerfed a while back, and now it has the same velocity as the TRG. Speaking of the TRG, while it's not as crazy as it was before, it is an arguably better intervention with a limb kill, but a slightly worse torso kill. The only snipers that can one hit to the limbs are the NTW, BFG, and TRG, and technically the SFG if you count that, and the 50 BMG Saiga, and maybe the Harpoon if you count that, and maybe some of the slug conversions, but for regular snipers, it's just the NTW, BFG, and TRG. The fastest firing sniper rifle in the game is the SVU Auto. The fastest walk speed gun in the game is the Gyrojet with the short barrel, which is really good in tandem with a very slow melee. You can actually melee and kill enemies if you can physically see them through a wall, so if they're proning and they're above you, you might be able to kill them. 20 by 110 on the NTW actually has more penetration than slap ammo on the 50 cals, making slap ammo even more useless. 416 Barrett ammo can obliterate your torso kill range, completely removing it on the M107, but gives you extreme velocity and better penetration. The M107 aims slower if you're using a smaller magnification optic, but if you use a sideways grip and a scope, you can actually get pretty good aim speed while still having a pretty low magnification. 357 on the Vector does allow it to deal more damage and 5 shot kill at any range, and it also gives you a faster reload. The default ammo Rama might do some of the worst min damage possible, but actually up close, it kind of competes with a lot of the PDWs in the game. The less damage in the game for an entire bullet fired is pennies on the E-gun, which does two damage. Two damage. It takes 50 shots to kill at range. The Thompson is one of the few guns left in the game that can equip an extended mag and an ammo attachment. Most of the other guns have had their extended magazines moved to their ammo category, meaning you can't really have both at once. MP7 can also attach an extended magazine, but with only eight of reserve and an awful reload time, I don't really think it's worth it. The largest increase in magazine capacity and an extended mag is the extended magazine on the Makarovs, which will increase your capacity by 10 times from 8 to 80 rounds. A weird feature of 45 ACP on the Fowls is that it doesn't really reduce recoil by all too much, considering it's a much smaller round. By the way, the Farged is the best gun in the game. Use it. It's super good. AKM is actually slightly less accurate than the AK-47. The reason it doesn't look like this is because the AKM has far less camera recoil. Since the AN-94's first two shots and automatic are fired at 1800 rounds per minute, you can use the 7.62 conversion which can two shot head to practically insta-kill. Do not use 223 on the FAMAS F1. You will lose your three shot kill CQC and your five shot kill at range, and you won't even get a bigger magazine. You can spot a player or use a ballistics tracker even outside of your render distance. This is very helpful if you play on one or two graphics, and is actually pretty helpful helpful even on 10 if there's a very large map. The intervention has the highest default velocity in the entire game. The Saiga 12 is actually better than the AA 12 in nearly every way. It has higher RPM, better spread, but remember to never use Saiga 12 auto conversion because it doesn't actually increase your RPM, just your spread and your recoil. The Desert Eagle L5 is no longer just a direct upgrade to the revolvers. It doesn't actually fire as fast and actually can have a worse headshot kill range. The KSG 12 and Remington 870 are possibly the best guns to use for shut on. Due to their 32 or 33 3 damage, they actually keep their 4 pellet kills up close, instead of other shotguns which actually lose a pellet to kill with flechette. If you have a little bit of trouble with the AS Val and how slow it can be, check out Retract Stock. The recoil is still pretty good and you do walk faster. The long barrel on certain guns actually increases both max and min damage range, making it pretty much just a direct upgrade. Certain iron sights can be put on pretty much every gun. For example, here is the IWI sight, the TAR-21 irons on the Honey Badger. 556 on the Colt SMG actually increases your headshot multi. Sometimes the lowest recoil setup is not the best. 
that. So just because the oil filter lowers your recoil doesn't mean it's worth losing 15% of your RPM, a ton of damage ranges, and 5% of your velocity. Using the red or green laser can pop off on revolvers since it makes your recovery speed better. Keep in mind this will work with tri-laser but not as well. If you don't feel like using straight pull bolt on sniper rifles, try remove stock because it increases both your handling and your walk speed. And on sniper rifles, pretty much has no downside. If you have trouble getting the RPM down on semi-auto guns, try using a metronome for their RPM. This really, really helped me with the Mark 11, by the way. The long barrel on revolvers actually makes your recovery speed slower, which can be pretty annoying for tap firing fast. Snub nose makes your recovery speed a lot faster, however, muzzle brake is just snub nose, but with less downsides. If you want to get more suppressed enemies, do not use armor piercing. It actually halves your suppression. If you press E to spot an enemy and your hand moves, there is always an enemy there. Even if the red dot doesn't show up, which is a bug that happens sometimes, there will still be an enemy in that direction. The M107 with dust shot is not actually too bad. It does quite a bit of damage and has a ton of pellets, but the other 50 cals with dust shot are basically just objectively worse. The Steyr Scout with 5.56 does awful body damage, but is very effective against the head. Angled grip is probably the best low kill grip. The only other low kill grip is the vertical grip, and it's usually worse. The potato grip is alright and similar to the angled grip, but keep in mind that a flashlight can hurt your performance. Remember the recoil cap, especially on the M231. If you just aim down at their feet, you will hit them because the gun just stops going up after like two seconds. Nearly every single gun on warehouse can penetrate walls, including some of the shotguns. The VSS Ventores actually has the highest full auto headshot DPS in the entire game, making it very strong. It could do 99 headshot and it has 700 RPM. Sometimes an attachment does something different on a different gun. For example, a long barrel on something like the FAMAS versus on the 1858 is far different. If you read the descriptions of these attachments, you might actually have a better time picking which ones are good. Just walking around on a map can actually help you find good flank routes, better sniping spots, and overall increase your skill on that map. The CAC SRR is very good and incredibly sneaky. It actually has the same sound effect as the OS with silent. It is so quiet, man. If you're going to buy a conversion, make sure to check the price first. For example, something that's pretty trash like pennies can actually cost up to like 10,000 credits. The Osprey suppressor does improve your hip fire, but keep in mind that the compensator is going to do better in every scenario. If you peek a corner and there's somebody with a sniper rifle, do not peek them twice. It's usually not a good option. Make sure to switch to your primary before completing a flank. If you run into like 50 people and they're spawn on Metro and all you have is a melee out, that's going to be pretty awkward. If you have the higher velocity or better ping in a sniper fight, you might actually win due to ghost hit markers. It probably won't even be a trade kill, you'll probably just win the fight. High recoil guns are usually better with a low zoom scope or alt aim, versus low recoil guns which are actually better with higher zoom sight. That's why I use Coyote on every single AUG, because it has a 2 times zoom and it actually has a pretty effective use. You might think that buying keys for cases you already have is going to be less expensive than just purchasing starter cases, but trust me, it is not. The Paradox Choke is actually a direct upgrade on shotguns with slugs, and it even works on the DBV-30 odd 6, which isn't even a shotgun. Sometimes two attachments can be great ways to trade in stats. For example, running short barrel on the Hecate can slow your velocity, but if you run 416 Barrett, it almost cancels out and you get better handling. Leaving aim down sights on high recoil, slow guns will negate a lot of recoil. This is extremely helpful on the M107, SVDS, and even the Watt 2K. Running full choke on shotguns usually increases their effective range, but keep in mind you will lose a ton of damage. Remove stock and retract stock are actually the same statistically, but use remove stock because it looks way more sleek. If you're running away from a fight, throw a nade on the floor. It might just kill the guy chasing you. Even an ammo type that looks statistically like a direct upgrade can be pretty bad, like plus B on the Henry, which lowers your torso multi and makes it so you can't torso kill anymore. The 357 conversion on the Desert Eagles are actually very similar, despite the originals having very different statistics. The stocks on the Spaz-12 are optic attachments, but keep in mind that if you want to unfold the stock, you can just run a normal sight and it will unfold the stock. Sometimes having a neon skin can be incredibly inconvenient. I mean, look at the neon toothpaste honey badger man. All the scars actually come with the PM2, but just don't use it. If you set your FPS to really low like 5, you can actually make every gun, including the M231, have no recoil. The downside to this is definitely that you have 5 FPS and you probably walk about 1 foot per minute, so it's not actually viable at all, but it's pretty funny. If you're a high rank, use Wad 2K300 conversion. It's literally the most broken thing in the entire game, and if you're a stylist studios, please nerf it. It's so overpowered. The FT300 is one of the few snipers with a conversion that 3 shot kills limb and can even 4 shot kill limb at range. The only other example of this is 556 on the scout, but of course that's the farged and it's the best gun in the game. A tip about selling skins for new players, if you put a skin on your gun and then you sell it after you put it on, it will actually stay on the gun. However, if it's a customizable, you can't customize it and you can't take the skin off ever again, unless you want to just get rid of it. If you take it off, you can't put it back on. Another thing about melees, if you unlock them and you have a skin on them, you could still sell the skin for like a thousand dollars and you will keep the melee. Advanced stats are very important. I could make an advanced stats 
stats guide because a lot of people don't know multis and damages and ranges and stuff like that, but keep them in mind and check them before you actually decide if a gun is really good. The Zip 22 rat shot conversion can do 81 headshot damage as long as you hit every pellet to the head. If you fall off something and you press W and shift, you are sometimes able to get a huge boost which can throw you very far. It's kind of like an imp slide except it's actually a lot farther. Most AK-12 guns, especially the AKU-12 with the 9mm conversion is very good while bursting. This includes the RPK-12, AK-12, AKU-12 with 9mm conversion and guns like that. Always pre-buy guns in the test place before you purchase them in the main game. You won't lose credits because credits don't save in the test place. And another thing about the test place is that if you're going for points, never play in the test place because obviously it doesn't save and you don't get them forever. Some guns like the Saiga 12 u and Obrez can become basically secondary primaries if you have enough attachments. If you put a long barrel, an extended mag, and a stock on the Obrez, it basically becomes a Mosin. If you hip fire with a shotgun, it is perfectly accurate. However, zooming in will center the pellet spread, so technically it's better to aim, but hip firing is basically just as effective. Wearing headphones in PF and not listening to music is actually very, very helpful. Remember to not listen to music and wear headphones, so that way you can hear directional audio and hear every gunshot in every footstep. Aiming center of mass with a shotgun is actually better than aiming for the head. Headshot multis on shotguns aren't that good, and chances are due to spread you're going to hit more pellets with a bigger hitbox than you are with a smaller one. Some low recoil autos, like the old AUG H bar, were very good with the muzzle booster, and the SVDS actually works pretty well with it. It gets an extra 5 RPM, and the recoil doesn't become too unmanageable. If you hold down G when you have a grenade out, your crosshair will flicker every second, it'll flicker 4 times and then explode on the 5th time. Use this to time grenade shots and actually hit somebody immediately as the grenade explodes. Use your guns depending on the map and rotation. If the map is Mirage, a sniper is better than a PDW, but if the map is Bizarre, the opposite is true. If you disable shadows and Roblox particles, along with a few other things like shaders, the game runs much better. If you use a SCAR series gun, the folding grip isn't that good since they already have very low camera recoil. You can actually get much more credits by playing the objective, since the person with the most points gets 50 credits on the winning team. You get a lot of points for capturing the objective, and if your team didn't play the objective that well, you'll lose and not get MVP. Pre-firing around a corner that you already know a player is behind is incredibly helpful. You can make this even better by listening to them if you have headphones on. The Uzi with a 22 LR conversion is actually pretty viable. It has a 50 round drum and does massive headshot damage. However, the body damage is not that good. Every gun that has a full stock except the SVDS and the KS-23M are just better. The Sten or L2A3 has incredible hip fire. If you use a good hip fire setup, it basically is as accurate as when it aims. If you like Faust but you like good head headshot damage, the SA-58 SPR can one-shot headshot up close and can two-shot headshot all ranges, but still feels like a foul. Playing on console is actually very easy if you're a good console player. This is because most players are actually pretty bad on console. You can buy a name tag next to your name for 70,000 credits. A few melee, such as the World Buster, are able to one-shot anywhere on the body, whether it's a backstab or not. The intervention has a very weird delay after the bolt. You can't ADS during that time for some reason, but if you use the straight pull bolt, it will actually fix that. If you don't like actually killing people with melees, the Brass Knuckles is incredibly good for getting out of fights. Since it walks so fast, you can just escape. For some reason, you can't get banned for using a macro, although it's pretty cringe to use one. If you're jumping out of a window, you can still press X and super jump after you started falling. You can actually reverse the super jump and get on top of some buildings like ones on Desert Storm using this. If you have a gun that can change fire modes and you spam V, you can get kind of a weird alt aim. You can cancel a reload by just pressing left click while reloading. A lot of people might camp on crane, but it's not actually that good to camp on. Yes, you can see a lot of the map, but people will shoot back at you very easily. On most guns, the compensator is the go-to barrel attachment. There are very few guns where it's not the best one, so just use it on all your guns, and it will probably be pretty good. If you hold a frag as the game ends, the frag just won't explode. If you throw a frag right before the game ends, you can kill yourself or others after the end of the game and get the final kill. You actually get an XP bonus for unlocking new attachments on your guns, so using a lot of different guns actually increases the amount of XP you get. You can break glass with frag grenades. I don't know how to say this, but the Bundeswezer site or whatever, the one for the MG3 KWS, actually gives you an all tame on every gun that's on. Sniping in PF is actually a lot harder than using auto, so I recommend you improve your aim with automatic guns before using snipers. The AK-103, AK-105, and AK-12 have a bars barrel. The AK-103 and 105 actually get 850 RPM. However, the AK-12 just gets a weird delayed burst. If you're super jumping, just aim down sights and it will cancel your super jump. 
jump. This is very, very effective, by the way. Currently, the best gun in the game is more or less the RPK-12. Despite what most people think, RPM isn't everything. In fact, some low RPM guns like the M3A1 are incredibly effective for what they are. You can actually take positions through walls on some maps, such as on Hardpoint Bazaar, where you can take the point through a wall. Despite the CAC SRR and the jury being very similar, the CAC SRR shoots a lot faster. Some guns with low RPM actually have incredibly fast time to kill, such as the shotguns which can kill in 0.00 seconds due to the fact that they can one-shot. The SVU and the SVDS actually have exactly the same muzzle velocity, even though the SVDS does a lot more damage. The SVU can actually have a long barrel which makes it have more than the SVDS. The Remington 870 with slugs is almost a better version of the Henry. Its reloading is much less tedious and it actually does 99 limb damage and can one-shot to the torso. The Stevens DB with slugs is actually more or less an upgrade to the regular gun because you can actually one hit to the limbs to like 75 studs and on burst it does about 216 limb damage. Since the video is halfway over please consider liking. We're trying to go for 10k likes that's probably not going to happen but if it does happen comment your tips down below. If you have trouble hitting those scopes with a sniper if you stop moving for just a second your sniper shot will become perfectly accurate which allows you to hit no scopes very easily. There are currently three playable versions of Mirage. There's also the older versions and the Halloween versions so the total number of versions is probably about six or so. And despite Mirage being one of the most hated maps, if not the most hated map, it's actually very good for getting long range kills and sniping. Remember that only certain guns are good for certain people. For example, I really like the G3 but most people will probably not like it. Theoretically the Shire Scout is the best sniper in the game. It has incredibly fast handling, 85 RPM and can one shot headshot all ranges. Another gun that's great for very experienced players is the Mark 11 with the 500 Phantom. This ammo type can actually give you a torso kill, however it's hard to hit shots with. The VSS Ventura's actually used to be able to one shot headshot but now it does 99 headshot damage. If somebody's weakened at all you will be able to one shot headshot so keep this in mind when using the VSS. Just a little suggestion, use the Farge, it's the best gun. In PF if you prone or crouch it will not reduce recoil. However since it makes you aim a little bit lower, theoretically it makes you hit more shots but it doesn't really help that much. If you press F5 you can get the first kill of every game. If you use a red laser on the WA-2000 it has a purple laser but if you use the tri laser it has three red lasers and not three purple lasers. Speaking of the red laser, it's actually really good on DMRs. The reason for this is because it makes your recoil recovery speed better, which is very important on a tappy gun like a DMR. The vertical grip is also decent on DMRs. It makes your recovery speed a lot better. However, it does increase your kick. Using the server browser allows you to play Mirage or Bizarre 24 seven. Just because your favorite YouTuber, including me, says a gun is good, doesn't mean it's right for you. Don't feel pressured to use a certain gun because I say I like it, unless it's the Farge. Don't make ranking up feel like a chore. If you're not having fun with the game, consider taking a break. PF is supposed to be fun, it's not supposed to be something you take too seriously. The AK-103 is actually a pretty good gun, but the AKM is simply built different. It has better damage but the same RPM and basically the same recoil. Now the AK-103 might be good, but the base AK-105 is pretty bad. It has pretty bad damage, the recoil isn't that good, and it has AK-47 base RPM which is pretty slow. The new SUSAT scope is completely outclassed by the TA-01 ACOG. This is because the TA-01 ACOG has a better main view and a better alt aim. Although Mosin 8mm is still pretty good after the nerf, Extended Mag will probably perform better because you just get double the capacity. You can play cool game modes in a VIP server using commands like Juggernaut or Gun Game. The Gun Game and other game modes can actually be played in the main game, however only stylist staff can initiate it. The 1858 Carbine and Henry 4570 are pretty similar, but the Henry has double the torso kill range, which makes it overall a little bit better. There's a Malcolm 3X and a Malcolm 6X. The 3X one is by far more used, and it's not actually too bad for low recoil automatic guns. The new gyrojet guns are theoretically the best guns in the game, however I find them quite annoying to use and I don't really like them that much. Primary secondary guns are basically worse in every way to their primary counterparts, however they're still secondaries and not primaries. Another quirk of these guns is that they are always unlocked later than their primary counterparts. For example, the Saiga 12 is unlocked way before the Saiga 12 U is. If you don't want to have to use a worse version of a primary, the 93 R is busted. For some reason drop shotting players will make you almost always win fights just because nobody drop shots in this game and they won't aim down usually. Fast walk speed on guns tends to be overlooked. Like I said, check this in advanced stats. That's why some stuff like remove stock are actually pretty good. The Rama 
actually had Ratshot when it first came out, but it was busted and it was removed and replaced with 380 ACP. Speaking of the Rama, the MP7 is almost better, with the same RPM but higher damage and basically the same recoil. But the Rama does have a very good capacity. The KG99 does less minimum damage than the Tech 9, despite it having about half the RPM. The MP7 used to actually have a fast reload, but they buffed all the other PDW's reloads, so now it's pretty much considered bad. Plus, P ammo is actually super good. It increases your muzzle velocity, penetration, and range, but makes your recoil a lot worse. However, special ammo is basically bad on every single gun. It makes your damage a lot worse, but only makes your recoil slightly better. The Psycho 12 full auto conversion doesn't make your gun shoot faster. It just makes your spread terrible. In early versions of the game, you were actually able to change your team. You can no longer do that in the main game, but you can in a VIP server, even if you aren't the owner. The MAC-10 is honestly kind of slept on in CQC. It can two-shot headshot at over 1100 RPM, and the recoil is manageable up close. If you want to use the AK-12 or AK-74, consider using their RPK variants, as they allow for the same playstyle with better capacity. The K2 used to be incredibly strong, however its recoil is not quite as good, but with 223 it's still very, very good. The best gun in the game actually used to be the M60, then it became the Scar Hammer, and then it became the RPK-12. Super armor piercing ammo is actually really good on the RPK-12 and the AN-94. Some guns that don't lose their 4-shot kill, like the L85A2, are very good with regular AP. Certain shotguns with birdshot are actually very viable, such as the Stevens DB and KS-23M. The flashlight attachment is basically useless. During 2020 Halloween, you could actually use it for a certain map, but it wasn't even effective then. Some weird attachments give you all tame, like remove stock on the Vector and the drum map Tommy gun. The TRG-42 has a great torso kill, great velocity, and a 42 style limb kill with long barrel, and can be considered an SFG with 6 bullets. This one is incredibly simple, you can just press space to spawn in. Many people don't know that, so I put it as the first one so everybody would actually learn that. You can super jump off of ladders super easily, and it can really help you to get out of a fight, or get into a fight, or avoid shots. Players in Phantom Forces don't even have any kind of spawn shield, so as soon as they spawn in at any spawn, even if they don't squad deploy, just kill them. If somebody's getting vote kicked, you can press the J key and it will just completely delete the vote kick. If you press yes or no, it will just stay up there for the next 30 seconds, and if you don't care about the vote kick, just press J. Guns in this game only have initial kick, after that they have RNG and it's just all over the place which you cannot really control. Muzzle brakes decrease your vertical recoil and increase your horizontal recoil, whereas compensators decrease your horizontal recoil but increase your vertical recoil. Keep this in mind when putting compensators or muzzle brakes on your gun. Pretty much every automatic gun, whether it's an assault rifle, PDW or Battle Rifle has a 1.4 times headshot multiplier, instead of most games 2 times. If your gun does 36 damage or more and has a 1.4 times or regular headshot multiplier, you can 2 shot to the head, so keep this in mind because certain guns like the SCAR PDW do exactly 36 damage and therefore can 2 shot to the head. If an ammo conversion or extended mag increases your reload time, you can't actually tell. It doesn't change the number, however it highlights it in yellow, it just doesn't tell you the new number. The muzzle booster attachment does not work on sniper rifles that are bolt actions, shotguns that are pump actions, the GB-22, the Stevens DB, and guns like that. However, the muffler or the oil filter will not slow down these guns. In certain guns such as the Vector and the MP-1911, your maximum damage range will increase when using hollow points. This can allow you to increase the 3 shot range on the Vector by a ton, probably like 10-15 studs. Guns with silent ammo and an oil filter are some of the quietest in the game. Suppressors will actually lower your muzzle velocity enough to the point where your spread will actually increase by a lot. So if you see somebody using a suppressor on the KSG-12, what are they doing dude? There is a delay to super jump or slide after performing such an action. If you memorize the amount of delay, you can more effectively time your jumps. The muffler and oil filter actually lower your recoil a little bit. You can also use the oil filter or muffler on guns that it works on to make them less mag dumpy. I remember I used to use it on the AUK H-Bar. The Osprey suppressor lowers recoil and increases your minimum damage range, which makes it a pretty good barrel attachment and honestly probably the best suppressor in the game. The Coyote and Barska Electro are actually different models, although they're incredibly similar. If you prone on grenade, it will not stop it from blowing up your teammates like it would in real life. Most of the grips in the game will slow down your aim down sight speed, but will actually increase the time at which you can shift to steady on sniper scopes. The sideways grip does not actually change your aim down sight speed at all, and the skeleton grip increases it. The sideways grip is actually super underrated. It doesn't change your ADS time, it slightly, barely lowers recoil, and gives you a nice alt aim. 
Tame. A lot of scopes and guns actually come with all Tame, such as the Fowls, the LMGs, the PPSH, the P90, and the like. Scopes also have an alternate aim if you press T when you're aimed down sights, but not every scope has it. The highest RPM gun is tied between the Stevens DB and the Sawed Off because they both have an infinite RPM burst, but the highest RPM automatic is either the Tech 9 or the Tommy gun with the M1919 conversion. The Zip 22 is a 7 to 9 body shot, but can always 3 shot to the head. The M9 pistol and Glock 17 pistol are both unlocked at rank 0 and are exactly the same almost. The multipliers are exactly the same, the unlock rank is exactly the same, and overall they're pretty similar. However, the Glock 17 does have an extended mag and a stock. The SVU used to be in the DMR category. The 50 BMG on the Hakate BFG and M107 is different from the 50 AE in the XIX, which is different from the 50 GI in the Colt SMG 50 GI conversion. The Plague Insight is actually a super underrated sight and might be one of the best in the game. It's basically like a DCL 120 that's a scope and you don't actually like aim down sight super slow with it. Certain guns actually have an extended mag when you use the 223 Remington attachment. This might make your gun reload slower, but it can be very, very helpful because it decreases recoil and increases your magazine capacity. So I'm using the ballistics. Oh my gosh. If your gun has horrendous muzzle velocity and you're far enough away, you might have to aim so high that the ballistics tracker might not even be effective at all. It might actually make the dot go away. The AK-47 with the hollow points attachment is very broken and is probably a better M3A1, L2A345, or basically any two hit gun. Pretty much never use AP on a PDW because it only increases your pen by about 0.2 studs, but it halves your maximum damage range, so it's pretty bad. All the points actually increase your suppression by 10%, but obviously armor piercing halves it. Yeah, nowhere near as much. Each laser in this game is actually statistically different, and the tri laser is all three lasers combined, but to a lesser effect. The DCL 120 and Mars actually lower your recoil a little bit. Because the Mars lowers your recoil and actually has the effects of a red laser, it is probably the best sight in the game. However, it's pretty bad, like reticle wise, and how far off the gun it is, and the zoom, it's just not my favorite scope. Everybody always talks about how OP silent ammo is and to always use it, but it actually lowers your muzzle velocity by quite a bit. Certain sights on a pistol can actually go to the front, but certain sights go to the back. That's why I always use Delta on my pistols, because it doesn't actually go to the front of the gun, which just looks bad. If you super jump while throwing a grenade, it will actually go a lot farther, and if you super jump while reloading guns like the SVU, it will make the mag go like very, very far. By the way, somebody told me this in the comments or something, and they were lying. Skeleton grip does work on the 50 cals, like it just increases your aiming down side speed so use it on the 50 cals. You may as well not use tracer list to be honest. It's still pretty easy to see and it makes your hip fire worse which is kind of annoying. If you use a higher field of view which you can change in settings, it'll make certain scopes that aren't really supposed to zoom in like actually zoom in. Phantom Forces is based off of the battlefield games specifically 3 and 4. The Tavor guns such as the Tar 21 are kind of slept on because they have very good multipliers. The Intervention actually does 99.9 .9 damage to the torso which actually rounds up to 100 because it can one shot torso. However, if you use a suppressor, it will literally just completely remove the torso kill, so don't use a suppressor on the intervention. But if you put a suppressor on the BFG, it doesn't actually drop damage. I actually made a full video on that if you want to see it. It's called the No Damage Drop-Off Gun in Phantom Forces. Not a lot of people remember this, but the PPSH with the Obrez Barrel used to literally be the best gun in the game. It did 36 damage, which meant it could two-shot headshot at 1000 RPM with a 71 round capacity. It was very broken. However, they nerfed the damage by 5 on it, so now you have to use hollow points to get a 3 hit. It's still decent with Obra's Barrel and hollow points, but really not as good as it used to be. The Civi Mag on the P90 makes her reload fast. I guess it's good. You should probably use it. This game has a lot of AKs, like way too many. And a fun fact about the AK, some of them aren't even real, like the AK-12BR. It's not a real gun. Hollow points on the MP7 can be kind of cracked because it's basically just a low rank vector. Speaking of the vector, back before 9mm conversion, people were always talking about giving it an extended mag. However, it already has an extended mag. The default mag is actually a 13 round capacity. If you see a long pitfall in a map like Heights, it will probably kill you, so just stay away from it. On those high up maps, the ground is usually just like a death box for some reason. If you suppress somebody, even if you don't hit them, it will make it so their teammates can't spawn on them. So if somebody's behind cover and you don't want him to get teammates, then just spray at him with like a high suppression gun. If you press F5, you just die. It used to have a 5 second cooldown, but now it just kills you. I have no footage of this, but if you have a really slow PC, you can actually play the game before the loading screen shows.
goes up. There's like no textures and you're not holding anything. It's like, it's super cursed. If you're one of my few console player viewers, you should know that the hitboxes on console are actually bigger than the player model. So if somebody's behind cover, shoot like right over their head and you'll probably be able to hit them. The Saiga 12 has way too many conversions. The long barrel on shotguns decreases your spread twice. It makes your aim choke better and your velocity better. The KSG 25 barrel is actually an extended mag. The map known as Ruins was actually used for the zombie event during the Ready Player One event. A lot of people actually liked it, including me, so they added it to the actual game. There was going to be a burst DMR in the game called the SVK-12E. It was going to be similar to the AK-12BR, but it was going to do a lot more damage and have a lot more recoil. However, the gun is not being added to the game ever. The PBK-12 was originally added as a actual gun. Now it's a conversion, but when it was first added, it had its spam burst, but only did 35 damage. People hate on the M60 a lot now and say it's bad, but it's still actually a decent gun. If you don't mind getting vote kicked, it might be worth trying out. When they first added 223 to the game, it actually had a zero kill requirement, but now it has a 500 kill requirement. The Type 88 was actually added before the PP Bison was, but since everybody kind of hated it and wanted a Bison, they added a Bison as well. The G11 is actually a menace to society if you can use it. They buffed it super hard and now it's like actually busted. Speaking of burst, the M16A4 and M4 used to be literally the best guns in the game. However, they nerfed them and they have huge burst delays now. If you really try, you can probably get them down and still go off with them, but they're just not quite as good. The AUG A3 Para is basically an M4A1 upgrade. It got a free extended mag recently. You should probably check it out. It's a good gun. The SVU Auto Conversion has the same RPM as the AK-74, but can one-shot headshot. The Thumper actually shoots a grenade. It's the 40 millimeter sponge grenade. It doesn't explode, but it's still a grenade. The community actually had a meltdown for like three hours when the Thumper came out. For some reason, you can leave the map in a lot of different places on highway lot. The M107 is practically a direct Hikate upgrade, which is basically a direct BFG upgrade, so basically just use the M107. There are actually five main Phantom Forces games that you can go to. There's the regular game, the test place, the SEL build, the unstable branch, and the console version. There's also a server browser and an anti-ping matchmaking, which can kind of be helpful to get good servers. PF was actually 2015 Roblox game of the year. The short barrel attachment actually increases your maximum damage range, but severely decreases your minimum damage range. However, the long barrel barely decreases your maximum damage range, but severely increases your minimum damage range, which basically makes the long barrel way better. If you're a low rank, try farming up some Colt LMG kills because the Colt LMG is very good. The best melee for movement is by far the Brass Knuckle because it has the fastest walk speed in the game. The Morningstar is more or less the best melee. It has a great blade range, pretty good swing speed, and does a crazy amount of backstabs with 200 backstab damage for some reason. The Harris CQR grip has a pretty bad laser. It's basically just a worse red laser. And the grip itself isn't even that good, so you may as well just use a red laser. If a gun has a long barrel, regardless of what class it is, what type of gun it is, use it. The best grip for long barrel is usually going to be the stubby grip because it helps for overall recoil. And don't let some people fool you into using the pistol grip on like the BFG or something. It's really only good on rotational recoil guns, meaning use it on the HK416 and HK21, but most guns it's not going to be that effective on. Phantom Forces actually kind of has a theme song, but it's not really implemented into the game. The maps known as Black Sight and Rig are super underrated and are great for getting high kill games, but most players just don't like them. Slugs are perfectly accurate, so using them on a gun like the Stevens DB can actually be very good. Flechette isn't actually as good as it used to be. I wouldn't even use it now. Instead of giving you 3 studs of pen, it gives you 1.5 studs of pen, and it lowers your damage by a lot and doesn't really change your damage ranges anymore. For some reason, the gun known as the Jury, which already fires one bullet, has a slugs ammo type. This basically basically just gives it a free torso kill. It's pretty good. The GB22 without the 50 cal conversion is basically worthless. The reason for this is that the secondary known as the Obrez is basically just a better version. AP is more useful on the MP7 because on the P90 it loses half of its 4 hit kill range, whereas the MP7 doesn't lose quite as much. With no attachments, the AKM and AK103 are nearly identical. The AKM is probably better in my opinion, but the AK103 does have the advantage of having the Galil conversion and the Bars Barrel. If a gun has a 1.2 times torso multiple, Player, then hollow points are basically useless because they remove the torso multi and it already does hollow point damage to the torso. If a gun has more than a 1.2 times torso multi, hollow points will actually lower your torso damage. If you snipe in your low to medium rank or even a high rank, consider using the intervention instead of using something like the OS because the OS is just trash. I don't recommend you pre-buy guns that aren't unique. For example, why would you pre-buy the C7A2 when you have the M16A3 and the M4A1 and they're basically the same thing? You should spend your credits on something like the M231 because it's very unique and no other gun is kind of like it. If you're holding out a melee or you have a chainsaw grip on your gun, you can't actually cancel a super
super jump. This is gonna be really annoying because that's basically why I don't use the chainsaw grip on any gun. I cancel super jumps every time I do it, so uh, if you don't super jump, I guess you can use a chainsaw grip, but most of us aren't gonna be able to do that. Lastly, you can actually earn 50 points per person without actually hitting them even one time. The way to do this is to first suppress them and then spot them. If they end up getting killed by a teammate, you will actually get 50 points, 25 for the suppression and 25 for the spot bonus. Anyways, gamers, if you guys did enjoy, that is 300 tips and tricks and Phantom Forces. Between all these videos, it must have taken me at least like two dozen hours to compile all the tips and then to record and then to do all this editing stuff. So make sure to like and subscribe. But I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.